what is the speed of an object? That's a common question that we could be asked in physical science and one that we're going to focus on during this next section together. Today in particular, we're going to be asked to find the speed of two different toys. The first is a red train that I have in this hand right here. The second is a black train that I'm holding in my other hand. We're going to, through the use of data collection, find the speed of each of these toy trains. Let's start off in the race. It's pretty clear the red train has a faster speed. But did that really answer the question? Did we find out the speed of the red train or the speed of the black train? No, we didn't. We just found out that the red train was faster, but we still didn't find out what its exact speed was, nor what the exact speed of the black train was. In order to find out the exact speed of both trains, we need to be a little bit more specific, and we need to collect some scientific data. Let's do that now. In order to find the speed of our red train, I have a setup like you see in front of you. We have a couple of meter sticks which will tell us exactly how far the train has moved. In other words, the distance traveled by the train. We're also going to use my cell phone as a timer in order to figure out how much time has passed as the train moves across the table. I'm going to set a five second timer and see how far the red train can move in those five seconds. Let's get to that, that, that now. Three, two, one, go. Notice that after exactly five seconds, the red train had moved 140 centimeters. Let's see if we can use that information, the fact that the train moved 140 centimeters in exactly five seconds, to figure out what the exact speed of the red train truly is. Welcome to the whiteboard where we'll do our calculation. For the red train, we knew that it traveled a distance of 140 centimeters. That's where I placed my red ruler down to figure out exactly how far the train had gone. And we knew that it traveled those 140 centimeters in a time of five seconds. Well, if I want to find the speed of that train, I'm going to do a calculation. However, scientists don't typically write out the word speed like this. Instead, they use a symbol for speed. And maybe that symbol to represent speed is familiar to you because we used it when talking about waves. Do you remember how we used the letter V to represent the speed of a wave? Well, we're going to use that same letter to find the speed of an object. That's because speed is very closely related to velocity. Now there is a slight difference between speed and velocity, which we'll talk about in the next couple of days. But for now, we can use the letter V to represent speed in our equations. So let's now use an equation to figure out the speed of our train. The equation to find the speed of any object is as follows. The speed is the distance divided by the time. Essentially, when calculating speed, you're trying to figure out how far the object moved in how much time. Objects that have a really high speed would travel very far distances in very short, short amount of time. However, objects that have very low speeds would travel very short distances in very long amounts of time. But let's see if we can use that equation along with the information that we know about the red train to come up with its speed.
Notice that I've now written over here the math that corresponds to our equation. I didn't need to reorganize my equation at all because it was already solved for V. So all I had to do was plug in the distance, which was 140 centimeters, and plug in the time, which was five seconds. Now, to calculate the speed, all I have to do is go to my calculator and do 140 divided by five. That gets me a speed of 28. But 28 what, you might be asking? Well, since speed is a measurement of distance over time, the units reflect that the same way. Our units in this case are centimeters per second because this measurement tells me how many centimeters the object will cover in a single second. Based on my work, I can see that the red train has a speed of exactly 28 centimeters per second. But how about the black train? Let's repeat that experiment to figure out what the speed of the black train is. Three, no, three, two, one, go. Notice that the black train did not travel nearly as far as the red train. That makes sense because the black train has a lower speed. In the same five seconds, the black train only traveled 82 centimeters, clearly a much lower speed. But let's go back to the board so we can figure out what the exact speed of our black train is using numbers. So let's repeat that process for the black train. The black train traveled a distance of only 82 centimeters. And it was moving for the exact same amount of time, five seconds. So let's calculate the speed of the black train, which we'll give the symbol V2. And in fact, since I already know that it's going to be in centimeters over seconds, I'm going to put that as my unit just in parentheses to remind myself for when I get to the end of the problem. We'll use the same equation that we did before. Speed is equal to distance divided by time. And I won't need to reorganize this equation because speed, or V, is already by itself. So let's do the math. So the speed of the black train is 82 centimeters, which is my distance, divided by 5 seconds, which was my time. Plugging that into my calculator, I get an answer of 16.4. That means that the speed of the black train is 16.4 centimeters per second. When we started the video today, we saw that the red train was clearly faster than the black train. But now we have numerical proof, something that scientists call quantitative with an N data. We can clearly see that the speed of the red train at 28 centimeters per second is larger than the speed of the black train at 16.4 centimeters per second. And that made sense because in the same amount of time, the red train traveled a much further distance than the black train. Action one. But what if we were asked some other information instead of just find the speed? For example, this blue train that I have in my hand, I know based on past experience, moves at a speed V of exactly 24 centimeters per second. That's slower than the red train, but it's faster than the black train. 
Let's say I wanted to know how far the blue train would travel in exactly five seconds. Well, I could figure that out using math. And so I could say this time that I wanted to find the distance that the train would travel. And since my units for speed were centimeters per second, that means my unit, when I solve the problem for distance, will be in centimeters. So let's go to our equation. We know from the work we just did that speed is distance divided by time. However, we have to reorganize this equation a little bit because we weren't asked to find speed. We were asked to find distance. Well, to do that, we have to rearrange our letters here in order to solve and get D by itself. In order to do that, I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by T. That will help me eliminate the fraction on the right side because the t's will cancel out. That means that my new equation is going to read t times v is equal to d. In other words, if I multiply the time that the train will be moving for times its speed, I will figure out the distance that the train will travel. Let's do some math. Five seconds was the time that the, the, the blue train will be in motion for. If I multiply that by the speed of the blue train, 24 centimeters per second, just like I was instructed to over here, I'll figure out the distance the blue train will travel. If I plug this into my calculator, 5 times 24, I will find that the blue train in five seconds will travel a distance of 120 centimeters. Now remember the red train traveled a distance of 140 centimeters in five seconds, but that makes sense that the red train will travel further because it had a bigger speed. The black train in those same five seconds only traveled 82 centimeters. And again, that makes sense as well because we knew the black train had a lower speed. So let's test this out. Does our data actually back up the math? In five seconds, will the blue train cover 120 centimeters worth of distance? Let's go back to the table and find out. I've got my stopwatch set for exactly five seconds. So let's set the blue train in motion and see where it ends up. The blue train should end up at 120 centimeters, which is right here. So I'm actually going to place my ruler underneath that spot so that you can see exactly where the blue train should reach. Let's listen closely for the time to see if after five seconds, the blue train ends up right at the red ruler. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Did you hear that? As the blue train crossed over the ruler, it traveled exactly 120 centimeters. And the beeping that you heard when that happened meant that exactly five seconds had passed. So we know that our blue train, which has a speed of 24 centimeters per second, will travel exactly 120 centimeters in exactly five seconds. Hopefully you saw from what we just did that the speed of an object can be calculated using the distance divided by the time. And the unit that you would use for speed would just be your distance unit divided by your time unit. For example, if you used miles to measure distance and you used hours to measure time, then your unit for speed would just be miles per hour. Or if you use kilometers to measure distance, and you used minutes to measure time, then your units for speed would be in kilometers per minute. Hopefully you also saw in doing our work today that you could take this equation and reorganize it using the three-step method. 
For example, if you were told the speed of an object and how much time it was moving for, you could calculate the distance the object traveled. Or if you were told the speed of an object and the distance that it moved, you could calculate the time or how long that would take. Next time, we'll see if we can go in a little bit more depth as to how this equation works. But for now, hopefully you have an understanding that the speed that something moves at is directly related to the distance that it travels and inversely related to the time it takes to travel that distance. Thanks for watching.